very soon for this section, within one or two minutes. Okay, um, thank you for having me chairing this section. Mobile learning is a rapidly expanding field in education that leverages mobile technology to facilitate and enhance learning experiences. We are glad to have Dr. Dan Yi Sun for this theme-based speech. Dr. Sun is an assistant professor and associate head at the Department of Mathematics and Information Technology at the Education University of Hong Kong. Her research interests include ICT-supported science education, mobile learning, technology-oriented STEM education, and pedagogy in educational technology. Dr. Sun is serving as the chair of FCSIT on Comtel and an associate editor of EPSI official journal, Reptel. The Dr. Sun was awarded with EPSI Early Career Researcher Award in 2022, an Education University's President's Award for Outstanding Performance in Research in 2023. Today, Dr. Sun will be delivering a thought-provoking presentation on exploring the evolution of mobile learning environments. Now, please join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Sun. Thank you for uh, uh, Pro Professor Kong's introduction. So I will start our pre uh, my presentation. So actually this presentation is uh, uh, accumulating uh, my past uh, research experience in mobile learning and uh, uh, so and also uh, express and uh, my key uh, contribution uh, of the uh, in the area of mobile learning okay So uh, this is the outline of this uh, talk. I'd like to uh, just introduce some general uh, keywords, uh, which is frequently discussed in uh, educational technology. And uh, uh, second, I will uh, taking some my research ex example example uh, to uh, describe uh, how uh, our team uh, make efforts uh, in the designing and developing. Uh, some learning environments uh, supported by the use of uh, different technologies involving mobile uh, technologies. Uh, so I would like to also share my recent research uh, in the mobile learning in the context of STEM education. Yeah. So um, actually there are different um, terms in the field of educational technology uh, from the uh, past uh, decades we may uh, we may uh, use e-learning uh, e-school back and uh, then gradually some kind of words ict or clouding technologies and uh, during pan pandemic uh, there are also uh, various e-learning tools uh, designed and uh, offered to different uh, stakeholders including schools, parents, and the students. So now uh, we're moving in the AI uh, times. Uh, so from digital society to AI society. Yeah. Uh, during the conference, I heard uh, some uh, seminars and talks uh, or scholars and uh, professors mentioned the use of AI in the area of educational technology. Um, so, and uh, with the promotion of uh, STEM education, especially in Hong Kong, uh, uh, we know that 
STEM education has been uh, stated in Hong Kong educational uh, uh, documents. From K to 12, all uh, syllabus uh, has been uh, integrated, has integrated STEM elements as the core elements in the curriculum. So regarding the local contest uh, in Hong Kong, this kind of contest uh, motivates me to think how could we um, integrate uh, mobile technologies uh, in this uh, new initiate. Yeah. Before COVID-19, uh, we may have a clear uh, definition of the mobile devices, or we will have very clear uh, boundary uh, between mobile devices and uh, other uh, devices, uh, tablet, uh, personal computer, or desktop. But uh, we, we may notice that during the COVID-19 and after COVID-19, more and more platform could be installed into the different devices. So the boundary become more blurred uh, between mobile devices and uh, other uh, devices. Considering, uh, so in, in my research, it may not have more clear uh, boundary between the use of mobile technologies and uh, uh, desktop. But, but the mobilization of students even teachers and uh, their uh, learning activities, these kind of elements become mobilized during and after pandemic. This is what I'm thinking. How can we provide this kind of mobilized learning environments uh, for the students and the teachers? So for the first here, I'm, I'm not going to uh, details about what is a mobile learning environment. Uh, I'd like to share some uh, research uh, in the field uh, of mobile learning. Uh, what are the elements, what are the key elements of a mobile learning environment? Uh, based on the introduction of some examples. So the first example is how can we combine uh, the different learning contests mediated uh, by the mobile technologies. During COVID-19, uh, I feel, uh, I noticed that during COVID-19 and after COVID-19, uh, especially for during COVID-19, uh, it's a limited opportunity for the students to do study in the classroom, uh, especially in Hong Kong. Uh, the school has uh, uh, locked down for more than three years. How are the teachers and the students support, uh, uh, how the teachers and school support the students to do learning activities out of the classroom? So, Moving students out of the classroom uh, mediated by the use of technology. Mobile technologies, uh, no matter using the uh, hardware, uh, mobile devices, or software, uh, which can be installed into different uh, devices. Uh, mobile, because uh, you may not know uh, that as whether students use mobile devices uh, using their parents' mobile devices or use their own tablet at home. All learning activities are uh, facilitated by different devices which happened uh, at home uh, uh, can be identified as uh, mobile learning activities as well. 
So these images show that a student uh, facilitated by different uh, software, uh, students can do different uh, learning activities in and out of a classroom. Uh, these photos are from my pre previous projects and uh, my current project uh, down in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, even using the same uh, devices, uh, students' thinking is, uh, thinking level is different. So we use it mobile devices and, it, and it's related to software to help the students to collect data, to do self-reflection, do collaboration and do discussion in and out of the class. We can also use um, AR or VR to facilitate uh, students' learning in and out of the classroom. For, for the first example, uh, I downloaded from the local news. Uh, the students uh, rely on their AR app to explore, uh, to conduct some field trip on farm. Uh, the second, apparently, this the first image uh, represent one pattern of mobile learning uh, using the mobile uh, devices and the software to conduct uh, some field trip. For the second, it's a subject based uh, AR. Yeah, I just uh, oh. cannot play. So actually, this is a uh, design developer. Uh, just ignore the language because it's, uh, it's a local um, test book. Uh, so the students can play this AR experiment when they scan uh, the, a code uh, printed in this test book. It has been used uh, in Hong Kong for more than five years uh, in general studies. Yeah. So um, uh, with this kind of technology or software, uh, as a teacher, uh, we may think, how can we design uh, learning activities for the students? How should we use this kind of um, learning tool uh, for different students uh, to cater in students' different needs? Some, stu some teachers may use this um, tool uh, for students' assignment, or, or some teachers may design this uh, activity uh, for revisions. Uh, students can replay these uh, science experiments and to, under, to get more understanding about how to connect a circuit in physics uh, education. So there are also uh, different uh, assessment tools. Uh, could be installed in the mobile devices. Uh, for example, Socrative, Plakers, Kahoo. Actually, this uh, kind of assessment tool is very popular uh, in Hong Kong primary and secondary schools. And uh, students uh, feel engaged in this kind of uh, real-time assessment uh, facilitated by mobile devices. Uh, for the Plakers, even the student uh, no, not necessary to bring any devices uh, to the classroom. Uh, the teachers just rely on one uh, mobile phone uh, to scan students' answers. So, uh, so with the various kinds of uh, technologies, uh, especially for this kind of uh, smart learning tools, uh, it will solve some real-life problem, uh, for example. How can we uh, reduce the cost of the schools, how can we provide uh, different families uh, and uh, to um, to make them uh, to realize their education equipped 
at schools. So in counting, uh, many uh, types of software and learning tools, how can we create interactive learning environment uh, for the students? So I take one of um, my, uh, this is the Moodle learning management system, um, which is uh, uh, adopt in our university. All teachers uh, uh, teach courses using this uh, learning management system. But the pedagogy and the learning design depends on uh, the teacher's needs and the student's ability and the nature of the course. So our university provides two versions. One is web-based and the other is the mobilized version. So students could check their learning activities and their lecture notes anywhere, anytime. So usually I will assign some online tasks or group tasks for the students. Uh, take this one exa uh, example. Uh, I also conduct a related study to observe uh, students' knowledge building uh, in Moodle uh, enabled learning environment uh, together with the use of some learning tools or uh, um, learning tools supported collaborative work. So in this Moodle enabled learning environment, I attach the lecture note and uh, one of the interesting tasks is I usually I will bring the students to out, out of the class, uh, which is we call eco garden on our campus let them to observe this eco garden and try to capture the evidence uh, on uh, whether they would like to redesign this eco garden, whether they found some problems to solve uh, in this eco garden. So this is a picture uh, captured by the students in this eco garden. So in this learning environment, uh, one is the learning management system, the other is uh, a student's field trip in eco garden. Uh, students will use their mobile phones to collect data and to uh, observe their evidence. Guided by um, incredible uh, learning principle, uh, students will answer the, uh, students uh, will uh, visit the eco garden, they will find the problem and discuss with their crewmates. And uh, finally, they will design, uh, the most important assignment is uh, they will design uh, the um, uh, they uh, they will uh, discuss a plan and redesign some parts of eco garden. And uh, finally, they will show their product and some either this work uh, in Mood, uh, in Moodle with their uh, explanation. Okay. So. Actually, uh, the, there are some key uh, components I would like to introduce and involved in this learning uh, environment. It's not rely, only rely on mobile technology. It integrates different learning contexts, classroom, uh, learning management system, uh, refers to online learning environment, and uh, uh, also face-to-face -face, uh, uh, classroom uh, learning environment, field trip, and uh, mobile technology, uh, and as well as uh, inquiry based learning uh, pedagogy. So this is a, a student's evidence to show what they found in this eco garden. Similar idea uh, used in my other uh, learning activities uh, in my uh, course. So. Uh, this is a use, just a, use a very simple mobile app, uh, Leno, uh, to collect uh, uh, plants uh, on our campus. Then the teachers will come back to their classroom, uh, they will share what they found. So the, the task is, I ask them whether you can find some plants on campus to represent your character. So uh, the teachers uh, collect different 
plants and they make voice record to explain why they think this kind of uh, plants uh, uh, have their similar characters uh, with them. So the purpose is that students, uh, the, the teacher student could share uh, the knowledge of, uh, of about uh, the plants and uh, they can peer review uh, each other's learning artifacts. Also, uh, the student will conduct a field trip outside and they bring back uh, to the classroom to elaborate uh, their understanding. So this is a uh, other uh, collaborate, collaborative work, uh, team competition. This actually this uh, a small app I install. I uh, I assign one task uh, just as a student lucky draw to choose the uh, keywords. Let them explain these keywords uh, during the course. So student could uh, do this activity at home. So using the Google spreadsheet, uh, I designed the peer assessment uh, for the students' participation in the class. So this is uh, the teaching strategies. This is a real-time assessment. Uh, all this kind of collaborative work or peer competition work embedded in the learning management system, Moodle, yeah. So this is another uh, co-construction of concepts. After one round of uh, study, I assign, uh, ask students to co-construct uh, the understanding. Uh, so, Based on this kind of teaching strategies, rely on different learning tools in and out of class. Especially, I think my teaching, uh, I focus more, I, I would like to find some new ideas from my teaching, uh, especially for during COVID-19. I really find some changes of our teaching strategies. We need to consider the changes of venue of students. We need to fall prepared for their changes of learning contexts. So more interactive uh, learning activities uh, have to be designed for this kind of students. And also in the pure learning environment, uh, how can we promote students' collaboration and interaction? Uh, so this rely on this kind of learning tools. Uh, this can be easily realized. Okay, so based on this uh, thinking and this is teaching uh, and learning design, uh, we conduct some initial study about uh, uh, because I really feel that student performance in collaborative work uh, is different from their collaborative work after uh, pandemic. So I would like to compare whether there are some differences of students' interaction during and after a pandemic. There are may some um, studies has been conducted for comparing the student performance during pandemic or before pandemic, but the limit study compares students' performance during and after pandemic. The pure learning environment should have some uh, influence on students' performance uh, after uh, post uh, uh, during post pandemic. So we really found there are some difference. For example, this uh, we calculate students' uh, interaction uh, behaviors during and after uh, pandemic. We found that after pandemic, students' uh, interaction, uh, the frequency of interaction behaviors are uh, more than uh, during uh, pandemic. Uh, the pattern is the same uh, from VR, uh, VR means server viewing uh, resources is their most frequent uh, behaviors. Uh, 
Uh, students prefer to review the resources, review the content knowledge. Uh, they prefer to do more individual activities uh, comparing to the, do the group work or semi work. So we also compare the transition uh, of uh, interactive behaviors. So uh, the same. Uh, this is uh, the these two tables shows uh, the students transition behaviors uh, of their interaction uh, behaviors. Okay. So our findings showed that uh, behavior conversions from for both. Uh, groups show that students prefer to perform multiple repetitive uh, behavior actions in succession of a certain period. It indicates that learners tend to refresh and uh, uh, browse the learning resources or activity pages repeatedly within a certain time period. With some degree of isolation of behavioral uh, sequence. So this is a, actually this finding is very superficial. We only found that students after pandemic, pandemic students prefer to do individual activities. Yeah. So students were engaged in more reviewing and reading activities. So this is a, for us learning behaviors such as logging to the system, retrieving information, browsing web page. Uh, clicking on links to resources and downloading materials can be used as uh, indicators of students' desire to learn through active uh, inquiry. So, in spite of this uh, research, uh, we would like uh, uh, we have the study limitation that because uh, uh, during it's difficult to collect data for during uh, COVID nineteen because students' learning uh, taking place at home. So. Uh, in the future study, we would like to collect more about students' discussion and discourse and refreshing data to show how the, this kind of knowledge uh, translate among uh, different uh, individuals or uh, students. So for the first, we emphasize I'd like to make a brief summary about the first uh, mobile learning environment. As I mentioned, there's no clear um, boundary between mobile devices and uh, other devices. We integrate different small mobile learning tools into the learning, uh, learning environment uh, to contribute students' discussion, to contribute students' co uh, collaboration. Uh, we would like to observe uh, whether students uh, have some knowledge building and knowledge transition and the, and the characteristics of knowledge transformation uh, in this kind of learning environment. So the second is about uh, my um, uh, pro pro project, which using the boundary ob objects as a connection uh, to connect uh, students' learning behaviors in the formal learning environment and the informal learning environment. I'm always thinking that when we are talking about uh, uh, integrate students, uh, integrate formal learning and informal learning mediate by mobile technologies, but how, uh, how does our students react to this kind of design and how uh, will they make use of learning uh, what they have learned in the class uh, in the application of uh, uh, problem solving uh, in the in learning form, uh, environment? Yeah, so we conduct a series of uh, studies uh, for this boundary activity based uh, uh, learning principle. First, uh, this is a uh, in this boundary learning uh, principle, uh, boundary activity um, based learning principle uh, curriculum. Uh, we designed the inquiry based learning uh, activities, uh, which have clear structure of pre boundary activity, during boundary activity, and post boundary activity. 
supported by Band X uh, curriculum elements uh, theory. Uh, we try to provide, uh, uh, in my study, we try, try to provide uh, the researchers and teachers a very comprehensive curriculum framework for them to better integrate different uh, technologies, uh, including mobile technologies, uh, in their standard curriculum. So this, uh, this activity is based on general study in Using the learning management system, Scourge, we facilitate, we designed five small activities uh, for supporting students' um, inquiry activities make, uh, with the make use of one mobile sensor, uh, mobile sensors installed in a mobile phone. Uh, for the second activity, Spore 8, uh, support the students to collect data in, in daily life uh, <coughs> in the informal learning context. Here uh, is a website uh, support students uh, share their data after collecting data. So this is uh, the interface of mobile sensor. Uh, actually, it, uh, it is suitable for collect some physical education uh, data, for example, light, light uh, sounds uh, or speed. So other students uh, collect data, they can share this data in the platform, uh, they can share the graph, and then they can share uh, images. So their classmates could, uh, could peer review their, each other's work and make comments. So this kind of activity could facilitate a students' high order thinking. Uh, for example, uh, critical thinking and uh, reflective thinking. We also uh, have some research findings uh, uh, for students' uh, characteristics of cognition transition uh, in their different <coughs> learning environments. For example, pre, during, and post boundary activity. Students' focus of discussion is different. Okay. Yeah. So this is a implication. The, th the point is uh, how can we connect, uh, better connect students' cognition development uh, with, the, with the transition from one places to places or transition from one uh, informal learning environments and the formal learning environments. So the last part I would like to go quick go through how could we integrate now we re realize that actually some kind of technologies are, can be mobilized, uh, for example, microbit, which could integrate some sensors, different sun sensors uh, in the STEM related product we call integrated tools. So here is a one example, actually in the microbit website of that you, you can find many uh, new designs uh, facilitate students mobile learning. Uh, in STEM activity. So this kind of coding tools could facilitate students' uh, uh, language learning. So here is a sensor on the remote uh, experiment which has been developed uh, during the pandemic support students to do uh, remote experiment. Students also have uh, some uh, app installed in the mobile phone. They can collect uh, data using these mobile sensors. So this is the uh, example in my, in my classes. I ask students to just uh, design uh, using the micro bit to design uh, a what automatic watering system. Uh, so this is the application of uh, a small technology, uh, STEM tools into the STEM for real life problem solving. One is integrated tool, the other is learning and teaching tool, we call the uh, here. Uh, 
this is an example. Uh, this is another angle of STEM education uh, involving uh, informal and formal learning contest uh, involving the use of mobile devices, tablet. And in the tablet, we also install the uh, sensors and uh, students also could uh, uh, search uh, online information. They will use their uh, Google Map, uh, Baidu Maps uh, to find their shopping mall and they collect data in that area and then they will rebuild, uh, redesign this area. Okay with their building uh, models. Designing and uh, designing and modeling is one of the features of STEM education. Uh, here, uh, I'd like to use another mode. Uh, so this is uh, using the learning and teaching tools uh, in science, facilitated by the uh, flip classroom. Uh, so this, actually, this, this kind of activity could move out of classroom, let the students observe, experiment, during their uh, homework. This is their paper, using paper to connect uh, students' activity. Uh, observing some videos, uh, listening some audios at home, and then bring this kind of paper sheet uh, to the classroom to conduct a further discussion and a further think, think uh, based on their activity uh, done at home. Yeah. So limited uh, use of uh, devices, especially for primary students, we are not uh, prefer the, for example, grade one, grade two, they use mobile devices. They just rely on their parents' devices to scan the QR code. Okay, so this is our, our recent studies about uh, how to integrate different um, uh, learning tools in STEM uh, education area with some, uh, in, with supported by the use of different uh, pedagogy. So uh, um, I, I think uh, based on our own expertise, we could have different thinking about uh, how uh, should the mobile learning go uh, in the future. Uh, so for my, uh, in my opinion, uh, we should emphasize a, uh, the integration of mobile technologies uh, with considering uh, the subject, different subjects and uh, uh, especially, we, we can consider the STEM uh, education uh, contest and the pedagogy. Uh, with the development of technology, we have different uh, uh, development of technology, uh, pedagogy. For example, now we have uh, design thinking pedagogy and uh, flip classroom pedagogy and uh, technologies not limited uh, to the size of mobile uh, the devices. Uh, we, we, we need to consider the features of software. Yeah, so here are the learning environments could be extended uh, uh, based on the contest, learning objectives, and we can, for the research part, we can focus more on observe the changes of student thinking and uh, knowledge building. Okay, so this is the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Yi, for the um, <coughs> um, informative uh, sharing. And um, <coughs> my original question is about the future, <coughs> how to move on with your research direction. But uh, you have summed up uh, in this last line. So can I open up this up for one or two questions from the floor about if you are interested in the mobile technology for science learning or related disciplines? Do you have any questions? We can have one or two questions from the floor. If no, may I ask one question for uh, Dan Yi? Uh, uh, you have this framework. So if we said uh, the uh, metaverse, the uh, AI can be uh, in the future, uh, learning teaching can be having some role to play. So. What do you think? What area that you can uh, incorporate the AI tools or the um, generative AI tools or the uh, <clears throat> the virtual environment? I think you have demonstrated the VR for the connection for the for the clicking <clears throat> of um, uh, the science textbooks <clears throat> for some understanding. So, what else you uh, you want to make advice for uh, the participants here? Yeah, I just know you mentioned the metaverse. 
or yeah. AI? AI. For metaverse, I can take one example, online learning plus informal. Yeah. The student could do learning activities in pure learning environment, the virtual uh, environment, and they actually they can distribute it at different places. Yeah. So can generative AI have any role in your framework? Generative AI. If it's installed in mobile devices, I think the learning can happen uh, anytime, anywhere. This is also fit the area of mobile learning uh, principle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, please, yes. Uh, it, it's a bit related. Um, it can be applied, my question can be applied to various types of technologies that we are using. It's more about inclusiveness. Have you tried inclusiveness kind of research in this mobile learning context? And what are your experiences with that? You, you it, mean inclusiveness? Yeah, it can be for a deaf person or a blind person, or it can be for a handicapped person. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, it's another uh, research area, inclusive education. We need to consider the different persons and uh, stakeholders to involve the technology uh, supported learning environment. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe what I can take one example. Uh, in Hong Kong, we also uh, encounter the same uh, problems. Some schools have limited resources and some, school, uh, some families have limited resources. We try to, as a teacher, and we uh, try to consider for that uh, that part, yeah, that parties, and uh, try to uh, reduce their cost. So uh, this is an example from my course. I encourage my English teachers to try to design different resources for the students. They just bring bring the paper and the letter. Parents use parents' uh, phone to to scan this uh, video. Let them watch for a while. Yeah. And yeah. thank you thank so you. much. We, we also have different uh, designs using some learning tools, very cheap and free. Yeah, yeah. For, for example, take one example, Plakers. Yeah, many schools use this, this one. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, before the closing of this section, may I invite you to join me to, uh, to thank you, uh, Dr. Sun, and uh, I have to present on behalf of EPSI and a certificate for Dr. Sun.